And I've got all four Logitech Brio webcams here. Now, with the latest release of the One Series, the most affordable Brio webcam, Logitech's gone fully in on the BMW naming conventions where you've got basically the One Series, the Three Series, and the Five Series. Then you've got the original Brio 4K or 4K Pro as it's currently known, which I might want to rename if I was Logitech to the 7 Series. Well, today I'm going to test and compare each one of these cameras using the most recent firmware updates to find out which Brio is the ultimate streaming or meeting machine. Let's go. Okay, so Logitech again has gone quite a bit on a rebranding spree, basically naming all their webcams Brios and all of their microphones Yetis at the moment. And that makes sense because both are pretty well-known sub-brands. Now, if you're new to my channel, I try to provide tips for work from home and also streaming. I like to do a lot of hardware reviews because I'm a gadget guy at heart. And in the meeting and streaming space, Logitech is a pretty legendary brand. And you know, I've purchased myself around eight different webcams from Logitech. None of this is actually sponsored. All this is my own. And so these are all my own opinions, by the way, as well. And just to kind of clarify the different cameras, most of the ones that I've purchased are the 01 models, like 301, 501, 101. That means that they tend to come in brown, more recyclable packaging for business clients. That also means in some cases that they don't work in the G-Hub software. Instead, I'm going to be using Logitune to tune all these different cameras' images what I want to do is actually go through all of them and show you the default settings. And I'm going to start from high to low. I'm going to start with the Logitech Brio 4K. And I'll start with everything using default settings and the built-in microphone in each one. Let's do that. Okay, so this is the Logitech Brio 4K. It's recording at 1080p 60 though. Just so you can see what it looks like by default and hear what the microphone sounds like in this camera. All right, so this is the Logitech Brio 500. Um, I've got the default settings on, also default microphone, so you can see and hear what it sounds like. All right, so now you're looking at the Logitech Brio 101 with default settings in Logitune, nothing set in OBS. And this is the microphone on the Logitech Brio 301. Okay, so this is the Logitech Brio 101 in this case, the default image, nothing's tuned. It's also the microphone on the Logitech Brio 101. All right, and just so you can see each of them side by side, here are all of them together and labeled in each quadrant of my screen. So let me know in the comments which default settings you like. By the way, the Brio 4K was the only one that was recording at 1080p with 60 frames per second. All the other ones max out at 1080p with 30 frames per second. Okay, so now I'm gonna attempt to tune each of these images using Logitune. And again, I'm gonna go through each one of them from high to low, starting with the Brio 4K. Okay, so this is the Logitech Brio 4K. In this case, I've set some settings for it to get rid of some of the yellowness and also sharpen the image a bit, just to go through what I've set. I have autofocus and auto exposure still on, which I think we're okay. Auto white balance, I turned off. It's at 4,970 on my system with my 5,000 Kelvin light. So it's actually really accurate in terms of skin tones to the light Kelvins that I have, unlike the other three cameras. Um, I've set down the brightness a little bit to 122. The contrast, I've turned up a little bit to 140, 12 points higher than standard. I turned down the saturation to 104, so that's quite a bit down, 24 points down. And the sharpness, I turned up 10 points to 138, just to give it a little bit more kind of a focusy look to it, a little bit more tack sharpness. But here is the tuned image of the Logitech Brio 4K, just so you can see what it looks like and hear what it sounds like. All right, so this is the Logitech Brio 500. I changed a few of the settings. It was actually pretty darn good out of the box with all of its defaults. So all I did really was I turned off HDR. I'll probably get flamed for this, but I thought the image ended up looking sharper with the HDR turned off in my case. I left the brightness uh, at the defaults. I changed the contrast. I moved it up to 140, so 12 points higher than the defaults. And I moved the saturation down to 120, so eight points below the defaults. So that was a little bit on the saturated side. That's a preference thing though. 
and then I moved the sharpness up to 140. So this is the tuned image of the Logitech Brio 500, just to see what that looks like and to hear what it sounds like. This is the Logitech Brio 301, and the default image was actually pretty darn good with it, so I hardly had to change anything in Logitune. I just wanted to change a little bit in terms of giving it a tad bit more saturation. So I bumped the saturation up 135 on saturation in this case, just to get it from a little bit of the grayish tones that it had before. And uh, I turned off the low light compensation, but that was it. Everything else is the default settings. And then this is the default microphone on the Logitech Brio 301. I was pretty impressed. All right, so this is the Logitech Brio 101 with a few settings tuned. It was actually pretty good. I mean, the main thing that you don't want to really mess with that I found as I was trying to tune it was that you want to let the auto exposure work at its auto level. And uh, for some reason, when I turned it on, or when I turned it off, I should say, do not have auto exposure on then back on. What happened was it was one stop too low. And that ended up uh, kind of ruining some of the sharpness of the image. I'll throw a, a kind of test sample, a little bit of footage up now so you can see what it looked like, but it was actually better in the default. So what I did was I just kind of reset the settings, made sure that the auto exposure set itself back to where it was kind of in the default that you saw in the very first video of this. So then all I did was uh, I ended up setting up the contrast a little tiny bit, seven points from 128 to 135, but I kept 128 on brightness, saturation, and sharpness, and turned off low light compensation. So basically, that's all I had to change on the Brio 101. I'm actually pretty surprised with how good the image looks, given that I hardly had to set anything with the camera. Again, you can see each of them here side by side, here all of them together labeled in each quadrant of my screen. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, so now let's go through the details and specs for each webcam. Now this time, I'm gonna go low to high in terms of the order. So first, all these webcams have some common features such as plug and play compatibility, as UVC cameras with Windows, Mac OS, and Chrome OS, as well as adjustable mounts that can fit on laptops and monitors, as well as right light auto light correction for brightness and contrast, different varying levels by webcam, and they all have built-in microphones. All of them except for the Brio 4K come in different color options and all max out at 1080p with 30 frames per second. However, they also have some major differences in terms of field of view and connectivity. The Logitech Brio 100 series has a field of view of just 58 degrees, which is much narrower than all the other models, and it's got an integrated privacy shutter, a fixed USB-A cable, and it does not have a quarter 20 tripod mount on its base, but it goes for only about $40 for the MSRP. Now the Logitech Brio 300 has a field of view of 70 degrees, which is also somewhat narrow in terms of webcams. It also has a physical privacy shutter. The Brio 300 has a fixed USB-C cable this time, and it also does not have a quarter 20 tripod mount on its base, and it sells for about $60 MSRP or $20 more than the 100 series. Now that takes us to the Logitech Brio 500, which has a wide field of view of 90 degrees, and its sensor is a four megapixel sensor, whereas the 100 and 300 have two megapixel sensors. It also comes with a privacy shutter that's built into it and has fixed USB-C cable. And unlike the other two, it has a quarter 20 mount for tripods, except it sells for around 130 MSRP, which is about double what the 300 goes for. And that leaves us with the Logitech Brio 4K, which again has a field of view of 90 degrees, which is the same as the Logitech Brio 500. Now it supports resolutions, as mentioned, up to 4K at 30 frames per second. And you can also film, like I'm doing here, at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And it also works with Windows Hello using its built-in IR sensor for biometric login. The other Logitech Brios do not support Windows Hello and do not have IR sensors. It has a quarter 20 tripod mount, but no physical built-in privacy shutter. There is, however, a detachable one included in the box. Now the USB-C cable is a detachable USB-C on the rear of the camera, which is nice and different than all the other Brios, and it has a USB-A on the computer side. So if you only have a USB-C on your device, maybe you've got a Mac, 
you might need to have an adapter or use a different cable that has USB-C on both ends. Just make sure that USB-C cable is a higher spec USB, say 3.2 Gen 2 or 10 megabit per second type cable. The Logitech 4K sells for around $199 MSRP. I happen to have the 2017 version, but its internals were updated in 2022 as a new version when its name was changed to the 4K Pro. And all the prices, by the way, are going to vary dramatically based on where you're looking and also the timing. I've seen new Logitech Brio 4Ks go for as low as $130 recently for the 2017 version, and it's pretty common to find the Brio 500 for about $100. And those price points, by the way, I think are a bit more fair for those cameras given the competition out there. And also they play into my recommendations. And to that point, literally less than six months ago, I would have said the Brio 500 was my recommendation from all of these cameras. But now I have to go with the recent firmware updates. And when I apply those, my recommendation is the Brio 4K, AKA the 4K Pro webcam and it has a 4K 30 and 1080p 60 support, again, which is better than the other cameras, and it has the IR sensor for Windows Hello login, and quite a few more features. Now the rest go really pretty much in the order of high to low price, and I can't say that I like the 58 degree field of view from the Brio 100, and both the 100 and 300 also need quite a bit of light to avoid excess noise in the image that you probably would have seen with their default and their tuned images. And if your price point is maybe $100 maximum, I'd probably recommend a refurbished or used Brio 4K. Just be sure to use Logitune to update its firmware to the latest. Otherwise, you might look yellow and you'll have one of the best webcams out there since 2017. It's been out for a while. Otherwise, they're all pretty strong values for the money and Logitune software is a mega improvement over the older Logi Capture software and also the webcam setting apps that used to be the ones you'd use to tune the image. And so that was an entire Logitech Brio lineup, the entire Brio Fest. If you like this video and got a lot of value from it, be sure to leave a comment or leave a like, subscribe to my channel for more remote work and also streaming and hardware tips. And as always, thanks for watching.